Hi listeners, stories have so much power and so does whoever controls the narrative. It is time that we dissect and analyze these stories. I am Vipul and this is Vogue Tales. Hi everyone. Today's story is a Japanese folk tale of danger, love, sacrifice, and adventure in the Oki Islands. This story is set in feudal Japan around the year 1300, called The Legend of Takoyo, the Samurai's Daughter. The samurai were the knights of feudal Japan. The story has similarities to another Japanese folk tale called Shippetaro, which I covered in the last episode, episode 28. So if you haven't listened to that episode, please listen and see what similarities and dissimilarities you find. On that note, it's story time. Once upon a time, around 1320 AD, a samurai named Oribe Shima was banished by a chieftain named Hojo Takatoki. He was sent to a small island called Kamishima of the Oki Islands. Oribe had a beautiful daughter, 18 year old, named Tokoyo. When Oribe was sent away, Tokoyo wept from morning till night and sometimes from night till morning. At last, unable to stand the separation any longer, she resolved to reach her father or die trying. Tokoyo was a very brave girl. And was experienced in matters of the sea. As a child, she would dive with the women of her village to collect awabi and pearl oyster shells. Takoyo sold everything she owned and set off for the province closest to the Oki Islands. She tried to persuade the local fishermen to take her to the islands, but no one was allowed to land there. The fishermen laughed at Takoyo and told her to go home, but the brave girl was not to be put off. She went down the beach, found an abandoned boat, and pushed it into the water. Then she started rowing. After several hours, Tokoyo reached the islands. Cold and exhausted, she stumbled ashore and lay down to sleep. In the morning, she began asking if anyone knew of her father's whereabouts. The first person she asked was a fisherman. I have never heard of your father, he said. And you should not ask for him if he has been banished, for it may lead you to trouble and him to death. Poor Takoyo wandered from one place to another, asking about her father, but never hearing any news of him. One evening, she came to a little shrine near the edge of the ocean. After bowing before the statue of Buddha and imploring his help, Takoyo lay down, intending to pass the night there. For it was peaceful and sheltered from the winds. She was awakened by the sound of a girl wailing. As she looked up, she saw a young girl sobbing bitterly. Beside the girl stood a priest who kept the shrine. He was clapping his hands and mumbling a prayer. Both the man and the girl were dressed in white. When the prayer was over, the priest led the girl to the edge of the rocks and was about to push her into the sea when Takoyo ran and caught the girl's arm in a nick of time. The old priest looked surprised, but not angry. You must be a stranger to our island, said the priest, or you would know that this business is not at all to my liking. We are cursed with an evil god called Yufane Nishi. He lives at the bottom of the sea. And demands once a year the sacrifice of a girl. If we do not do this, Yufane Nishi causes great storms that drown many of our fishermen. Takoyo said, Holy priest, let this girl go, for I will willingly take her place. I am the sorrowing daughter of Oribe Shima, a samurai of high rank who has been exiled to this island. I came here to find my father, but I cannot even find out. Where he has been hidden. My heart is broken and I have no desire to go on living. 
Saying this, Takoyo took the white robe off the girl and put it on her own body. She knelt before the figure of Buddha and prayed. Then she drew a small dagger, which belonged to one of her ancestors, and holding it between her teeth, she dove into the roaring sea. When she was young, Takoyo had spent many days diving with the women in her village to look for pearls. Because of this, she was a perfect swimmer. She swam down, 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 until at last she reached the bottom, where she found an underwater cave. As Takoyo peeped in, she thought she saw a man seated in the cave. Fearing nothing, willing to fight and die, she approached, holding her dagger ready. Takoyo took the man for the evil god, Yufei Nishi. However, she soon saw that it was not a god, but only a statue of the chieftain, the man who had exiled her father. Takoyo took hold of the statue and was about to lift it when a horrible creature appeared. It was pale and scaly and shaped like a snake, but with a head and claws like a dragon. It was 20 feet long and its eyes burned with hatred. Tokoyo gripped her dagger, feeling sure that this was Yufei Nishi. No doubt Yufei Nishi took Tokoyo for the girl that was sacrificed to him each year. When the creature was within six feet to her, Tokoyo ducked sideways and slashed his right eye. Now the monster was half blind. So Tokoyo was able to strike him again, this time near the heart. Yufei Nishi gave a hideous gurgling shriek and sank lifeless on the ocean floor. Takoyo placed her dagger between her teeth, took the monster in one hand and the statue in the other, and swam up towards the surface. Meanwhile, the priest and the girl were still gazing into the water where Takoyo had disappeared. Suddenly, they noticed a struggling body rising towards the surface. When the priest realized it was Takoyo, he climbed down the cliff to help her. He helped lug the monster onto the shore and placed the carved image of the chieftain on the rock. Soon other people arrived and everyone was talking about the brave girl who had killed Yufei Nishi. The priest told the story to the lord who ruled the island and he reported the matter to the chieftain. The chieftain had been suffering from a strange disease that his doctors could not cure. But as soon as the statue of him was recovered, he got better. Then it was clear to him that he had been under a curse of someone he had banished to the Oki Islands. Someone who had carved a statue of him, put a curse on the statue, and sunk it in the sea. Now the curse had been broken. On hearing that the girl who had recovered the statue was the daughter of Oribe Shima, the chieftain ordered the noble samurai released from prison. Now the islanders were no longer afraid of storms and no more girls were thrown into the sea. Takoyo and her father returned to their homeland where they lived out their lives happily. The End Legend has it that the city of Edo was renamed to Tokyo in honor of Takoyo. Isn't that amazing? Well, she is an indefatigable, unstoppable force of justice, so why not? In the beginning of the episode, I said today's story is about danger, love, sacrifice, and adventure. A loving and brave daughter sets out on an adventure and puts her life in danger to save her father, and while doing that, saves so many other girls from sacrifice. I love this story, but it makes me sad too, because Takoyo is the sort of folktale character we don't hear about very often. It isn't that amazing heroines like this don't exist. It's that people don't know about them or choose not to remember or celebrate them. As you might have noticed that last week's story of Shepetaro and today's story of Takoyo both have the sacrifice of a girl for the town's welfare as a common theme. And both are Japanese folk tales, so maybe there is some overlap of this theme. Chashiro and Takoyo have different motivations, but they do end up saving the girl and the whole town. And to crown off their general extraordinariness, neither of them get married or have a romance angle in the story. Glad not all folk tales follow a set template. On that note, bye for now. 
Let me know your thoughts on the story and our discussion by emailing me on woketalespodcast at gmail.com or through social media at woketalespodcast on Instagram and woketalespod on Twitter. And please rate, review, and like Woke Tales Podcast. And don't forget to subscribe so you can easily access our weekly stories. If you have any story recommendations or if you want to come dissect and analyze a story with me, give me a shout out on email or social media. Because whatever you do, keep dissecting and keep analyzing. <laughs>